Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to show an end-to-end -end application for a chatbot which uses semantic kernel in the web API layer. It will use MCP server for the call logic and the MCP server will be authenticated using an API key. And the web API will be called from a web application which will authenticate the user using user ID password, create a JWT token from a JWT server, and then the web API will extract the account information from the JWT token and pass it along to the MCP server. So for that purpose, I have four main component. A web application, which is right now a simple HTML page, which uses JavaScript to connect to the API, a web API which is built in C Sharp, and the web API uses semantic kernel internally to act as a MCP host. And then finally, I have a JWT server which is responsible for generating JWT token and a MCP server. So first I'll walk through the JWT server because it is the simplest of implementation and it is not part of the core solution. So JWT server has a login, which takes a user ID password, which are hard coded right now. And then it generates a JWT token and it passes along an account ID, which is hard coded one, two, three, four, five. And then the JWT service essentially adds the account ID as a part of the claims, which gets into the JWT token. This is the implementation of the JWT server. The next we have the MCP server, which we discussed in last couple of videos. I'll strongly encourage you to go through all the videos in the AI playlist that I have. I'll also share the link of the videos in the description. But this one is a standard MCP server where we use a web application or web API. We add the MCP server, use HTTP transport, and expose all the tools from the assembly. And as a part of the tools, we just have one tools, which is weather tool. The weather tool expects a city and an account ID. And it has the name of the tool and the description explaining what this tool is about. And currently everything is hard coded in terms of the weather information. And finally, it has a API key validator, which validates a standard API key. It has a authentication middleware which essentially extracts the API key from the authorization header and validates it against the hard-coded value. That's what it is. And I discussed all this in my last couple of videos, so you can go through it to understand the detail. Next is the chat agent. In the last couple of videos, the chat agent was a console application, which was creating the kernel and then adding stuff into it. In today's video, the chat agent is a web API. So I'll go through this. The first thing is the constant to declare the open AI URL API key and what kind of model we are using. Next thing what we do is we use the web application dot create builder to create a web application builder. Then we add course to the dependency injection and we allow all origin all header and all method right now, because this is an internal application, so we are not restricting anything. Next is the most important section. This is the section where we add the semantic kernel, the kernel object into the dependency injection of the web API using add singleton. So in the add singleton, what we do is first we create the kernel builder using kernel.createBuilder and we add the Azure OpenAI chat completion service to it. Once this is done, next what we do is we create a HTTP client transport. The HTTP client transport is the communication protocol between the MCP client inside the MCP host of this AI agent service to connect to the MCP server. And here 
just like last video, we have the endpoint connected to the local MCP server. And in the additional header, we are passing the authorization key as the header key and a hard-coded API key as the value that makes sure that the MCP server cannot be accessed by unauthorized users. Then we create an MCP client, passing the client transport. We extract the tools from the MCP client. Then we add the tools which are extracted from the tools of the MCP server and add them to the plugins of the semantic kernel. And then finally, we build the kernel builder, which creates an instance of kernel, and we return that, which is added as a singleton, to the Web API dependency injection container. Once that is done, then we go through standard JWT configuration, where we get the JWT token, issuer, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and then we configure the JWT here so that the once the JWT token is passed as a bearer token to this application, the application can verify that JWT token is indeed issued by the issuer we are expecting, extract the information from the JWT token, like the claims, and make it available to the application. Then we do an app.build. Then we use the course because we wanted this application to be accessed from a web application, hence we have to allow course. We use authentication and authorization so that the JWT token can be extracted. And then finally, we have a post method for weather forecast, which is the method which will use AI. This method, we are getting the kernel from the dependency injection. We are getting the HTTP context. And from the body, we are expecting weather input. Weather input is a record which has only one parameter called query. Now, inside this method, what we do is first, we extract the account ID from the user, from the account underscore ID claim, which I showed before we are hard coding or adding a hard coded value to the claims in the JWT provider. Then, we get the I chat completion service from the kernel using get requested service. We use the planning mode of auto. We use the function choice behavior of auto so that the function calling in the semantic kernel is automated. If you need more information about it, please check out my video on semantic kernel, which is one of the first videos I did in this series. Then we create a new instance of chat history. And to the chat history, we add the user message, which is nothing but the incoming query from the user. And then what we do is for the system message, we add the account ID for this request is the account ID that we extracted from the JWT. Now, system message, which takes a higher priority than user message. That is why I am adding it as a part of system message. Now, what this will do is when the AI will go through the user message and system message, it will go through the tool definition. It will understand that the account ID needs to be passed to the MCP server. So it will extract the account ID from here and pass it along to the MCP server. And this is the MCP server which we discussed before. And if you remember, the get weather takes the account ID as a part of the parameter to this tool. Next, what we do is we use the chat completion service object, make a call to get chat message content, pass the history, the OpenAI prompt execution settings, and the kernel. And then we wait on the result and return the result. That is all we are doing as a part of this entire class. Now, I have a breakpoint at this point as well as the MCP server. Now let me show the web UI. The web UI is a simple UI, which is an HTML only running in my local PC. I'm going to make a call to log in. Once it logs in at this point in time, it would have acquired the JWT token from the JWT server. So here I'll ask, what is the...
weather of New York and send a request to the API. Now add the API, we got the request. We are going to extract the account ID and we can see the account ID is 12345, which is the hard-coded account ID added by the JWT server. We go to the chat completion service, we go to history, add the user query to the user message, add the account ID as a part of the system message, and then run the chat execution. At this point in time, the call has come to the MCP server. And in MCP server, we can see the AI has detected the city is New York. So it extracted New York, put it as the first parameter, detected account ID 12345 as the account ID, extracted that, put it as a second parameter, and made a call to the MCP server. Now I'm going to run this. This is going to execute, and finally, we're going to get the response. The weather of New York City is 22 degrees centigrade and sunny. So as you can see, it is fairly straightforward to use Web API with semantic kernel and then call an authenticated MCP server. Now, as I discussed on my last video, I wanted to show you how we can extract account ID and pass it along to the MCP server if we are managing both client as well as server, basically both a semantic kernel chat agent as well as the MCP server. And this is the example of that. Now, if the MCP server is called from external client, as I mentioned in my last video, then you don't have to pass the account ID as a part of the MCP tool. The account ID is not needed because External clients will call using their API key, and from the API key, you can always find out the mapped account ID and use that. So this is an example. If we manage the chat agent using semantic kernel, which has the MCP host and MCP client, as well as the MCP server ourselves, and we still have to maintain a multi-tenant system for extracting data. Now, if anything is unclear or you want me to expand upon in this video, please leave a comment and I will surely try to explain more, create a new video and provide the scenario that you are looking for. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and if you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.